We have the pleasure of welcoming Matt Alder today to our interview series. I'm Aishwarya Jain from the People Hum team. Before we begin, just a quick intro of People Hum. People Hum is an end-to-end, one-view integrated human capital management automation platform. The winner of the 2019 Global Cody Award for HCM that is specifically built for crafted employee experiences and the future of work with AI and automation technologies. We run the People Hum blog and video channel which receives upwards of 200,000 visitors a year and publish around two interviews with well-known names globally every month. And now for our guest. Matt is the producer and host of the Recruiting Future podcast. He's a technology enthusiast who helps organizations plan for the future of work. He's a well-established keynote speaker and an extensive writer. He's the author of the book Exceptional Talent and his second book is to be published later this year. A greatly sought after mentor for new companies. We're happy to invite Matt Alder to our interview series. Welcome Matt, we're thrilled to have you. Um, and it's a pleasure, an absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you for thank you for inviting me. A pleasure, Matt. So, if you could tell us a little bit about the Recruiting Future podcast, if you could tell us also about your journey and what inspired you. Yeah, absolutely. So, I started the Recruiting Future podcast five years ago, um, partly as an excuse to buy um, yeah, geeky technology like this microphone. <laughs> this microphone that I'm talking talking to you on. Um, and, and so what happened is I started it um, as a side project and um, I, my main job at the time was working as a consultant to employers on talent acquisition innovation, which is something that I still, something that I still do. I have a number of clients that I still, I still work with on that. And as part of my research, I was talking to lots of people around the world to find out what was going on in their in their business, how they were using technology, their their view of the future, the kind of challenges that they were having as employers, and how they were solving those how they were solving those challenges. And it occurred to me that there were so many great stories and great stories that you don't always hear on the conference stage or in in sort of you know more, some of the more conventional um, platforms that were around at the time. Um, and I just really wanted to do my research in public and and bring those stories to a bigger audience. So, I started the podcast um, as a as a, as a side project, um, and that's probably what it was for the first uh, for the first twelve months. But um, at that point, the the audience started growing exponentially. Um, I get over thirty thousand uh, listens uh, a month now, and. It just became really, really clear that actually um, the podcast was my main job um, and it is very much my main job now. So I publish two episodes a week. I'm looking for the very best stories from around the world um, of uh, talent acquisition professionals overcoming challenges. Also do work around um, in, in a broader HR world. So other aspects of um, the employee, the employee life cycle, like engagement and onboarding um, and all those, all those kind of things. Um, and I also uh, look to pull in voices from outside the industry. So I think one of the issues that I feel we have as an HR and the talent acquisition industry is we can be very, very inward looking. Um, and um, whilst we're <clears throat> Excuse me. Whilst we're very good at sharing stories um, amongst ourselves, we we're potentially not that good at bringing um, outside ideas and, and seeing what's going on in other industries and bringing that into our industry to to move the industry forward. So one of the things that I do is I'm always looking um, at thought leaders from other industries, what's going on in the broader marketing world, what's going on in in other sectors, um, and and bringing those people into the bringing those people into the podcast. So I've had a number of um, uh, you know, fairly, uh, fairly famous uh, business business authors who've been on the show, and I'm just looking for ideas that can help move HR and talent acquisition forward. So, with the support of my fantastic sponsors, the the podcast um, is probably now eighty percent of my job. That's wonderful. It's nice to have a channel for voices that need to be heard and for people to become more aware of what's happening in the recruitment and talent acquisition world. And, you know, really congratulations to you for doing such a great job. Um, and, and, you know, there have been a lot of opinions about uh, technology helping in the hiring process. How much technology automation and robo hiring should be involved in the hiring process, according to you? 
Yeah, it's an interesting question. Um, and it's something that I've really been tracking for for 20 years now. So uh, before I did the podcast, before I was a consultant, um, I worked in the recruitment marketing sector. I ran uh, digital teams for two big recruitment marketing agencies. So uh, way back in the sort of the year 1999, I was looking at how technology was affecting various aspects of the recruitment process. So it's been fascinating to, to kind of track it over, um, over that 20 year period. Um, I think we're at an interesting we're an interesting tipping point now. There are there are lots of things that the that technology can do. Um, there are still things that technology that technology can't do, um, and I think we're at a tipping point because I sense that the debate in the industry is a, is about change. So over the over the last few years, the debate has very much been about machines replacing humans or software programs replacing um, human recruiters or human human people in HR you know whatever whatever that is um, and it's been a very binary conversation of that'll never happen or that's bound to happen um, and I don't think that there's been enough um, grown-up useful debate about um, you know what actually happens what I'm seeing now is companies really kind of working on that balance between what machines can do and what humans can do and how they can bring the best out of each other and that's the that's the debate that, that we should be we should be having I think um, as an HR industry, talent acquisition industry we need to be much smarter about how we use technology um, you know, in everything from recruitment marketing to, to communication, um, there, there are ways that technology could be, that more technology could be used in a much, in a much smarter way. Um, I think sometimes we focus on the wrong things. So in recruiting, for example, there's a lot of focus on using technology for, um, you know, allowing machines to make decisions about um, whether people are, are, are good for jobs. And, you know, wherever you kind of stand on that debate, there's lots of other things what technology could be used for that, that, that isn't used for in that in that process at the moment, um, and it's an interesting tipping point in terms of what we're going now through now with the, the the global global crisis that we're living through. We're all living through on a on a on a day to day basis um, because there, there's a lot of focus on 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 what happens next and um, what. Um, talent acquisition, in particular, will 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 look like as we emerge to whatever whatever our new normal is 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 going to be. And I think there's some interesting conversations. Um, I've got a podcast going live tomorrow, which is an interview with an HR director from a, a law firm. Um, and certainly in the UK, the legal industry has always been seen as quite traditional and not very. Uh, not very forward in embracing um, technology. Um, and I asked him a question about how, um, you know, the, the fact that all 300 people who work for their law firm are now, are now working from home, um, something they thought would never, would never happen and never be possible, but they actually managed to, to sort it out on a weekend, <laughs> which, again, which again is interesting. Um, you know, and he said that, you know, they're in a position now where, where lawyers are having to work. Um, via video, something they've never done before. So when they look at their talent acquisition uh, moving forward, they're going to they're gonna use a lot more video in it because they, they, they feel that the, um, the audiences they're talking to are going to be going to be more, more comfortable, um, you know, will have got over, um, you know, got over their reticence of, of, of using it. And I, I think that's interesting because there I've seen and actually done some research and seen research about what candidates feel about technology in the recruitment process. And there's always lots of talk about, um, you know, people going for jobs don't want to be interviewed, selected by a machine or um, go into some automated interview process or, or do video interviews. Um, and actually the research has always said that um, people are happy to do that if they have a better if they have a better experience. So um, I think a lot of the objections that, that people have about introducing those systems are probably out the window now because um, this is how we're all working on, on, on video um, from our homes. So I think it's interesting. I also think we'll kind of emerge to a future where um, speed and automation become the watchwords in HR and recruiting and um, technology is going to enable that. So it's, it's, a, it's an interesting time in the technology debate and I think that um, the thing, things will perhaps move quicker than they than they might have otherwise done. Absolutely.
it's that um, you know the balance between tech and human intervention that really needs to be figured out but do you think that you know things like uh, chatbots do they really you know increase efficiency especially you know the pre recruitment period wherein you're kind of you know filtering a lot of candidates and then you have to go through thousands of applications and there's also the question of candidate engagement so you know generally candidates are very anxious about coming to know about their results and a chatbot can you know quickly kind of give them the result after a few screening questions so do you believe in that concept yeah absolutely i i think the 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 thing to think of here is always is always strategy so um technology is never the answer in itself and i've seen a number of employers um in the uk companies like yodel and costa coffee um and lots of other employers globally um you know use chatbots brilliantly in the process and, and that's because they've really nailed down the strategy of what they're of what they're doing you know what is this chatbot for what are its limitations um and where can it really add value to the experience that that we're given that, that we're giving and and you're absolutely right um people people going through a recruitment process or thinking of applying for a, for a job at a company <clears throat> they want information and at, at the moment um universally across the world employers are very bad at providing that information um and keeping uh, keeping people kind of up to date with what's going on particularly you know any anyone who's recruiting at scale or or receiving um you know lots and lots of applications so i think that the smart use of chatbots to give people up front information to help them make a decision about whether they want to apply for this company um and to keep them in the loop in terms of of what's going on to ask to ask simple questions um you know i i think we're going to see an absolute um you know just an absolute boom in 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 the use of that but there has to be smart strategic smart strategic thinking behind it you can't just use it for the sake of it because it's just not going to it's just not going to work so um you know i'm encouraged by some great examples and use cases that i'm seeing and i and i and i hope and i hope people move forward in in that in that kind of vein so you know um since you're talking to a lot of people on your podcast um you know what is it what's the pulse that you get from them are they are they you know fearful of the future or are they are positive are they positive about it will they use more of tech now what is the general you know viewpoint i think it's very difficult to say right now um because uh, lots of uh, lots of companies are in in panic mode um lots of companies are have you know furloughed their talent acquisition their talent acquisition teams um but from the people that, that i am talking to you know i i do sense that um you know they they're going to be looking very carefully at the technology at the technology that they that they that they use moving forward um you know i had some brilliant interesting conversations outside recruitment so talking to some people in the employee engagement space and actually um technology for employee engagement absolutely critical at the moment with um you know whole companies working working from home um so uh, i'm you know it's it's difficult to make precise predictions <laughs> about what's going to um, what's going to happen because let's face it no one could have predicted that um the whole world would be stuck at home at the same at the same time um you know even 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 a few weeks ago but from the conversations that i'm having people are thinking very um carefully about um the technology they they move they use moving move, moving forward um i think that it's it's maybe not even so much about what's happening right now because you know it's exceptional circumstances it will be for a limited amount of time probably longer than um than than people hope but it but it will be it it's almost kind of what happens next and i think that uh, you know it's it's inevitable that we'll be into um you know some some kind of some kind of global recession um how long that lasts um i don't think anyone anyone could effectively answer that question at the moment um but whenever those happen whenever you know whenever recessions happen um you know having having lived through a few of them now what happens is you know talent acquisition has to move faster it has to it has to innovate many of the problems that that we were having um before this crisis uh, will will still be there 
So, um, you know, persuading, persuading people to move jobs and, and join your company, um, you know, will be, will be probably even, even more, even more difficult in, in some sectors. So, um, you know, I think whatever happens, we'll, 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 we'll move into a period where speed and innovation are going to be really important and technology has a huge part to play in that. Absolutely. I think these are very uncertain times and we really would have to kind of test the waters to understand what the mindset is. Uh, and, you know, I think recruiters are also very cautious at this point in time. And do you believe that there would be, you know, a sud sudden splurge of uh, the number of applicants, the talent coming into organizations, right? I mean, uh, there would be so many candidates trying to fill one position. So, you know, do you think that this would kind of completely change the way we do recruiting? Will we have to change the strategy around it? I think it varies. Um Obviously, there are organisations at the moment who are desperately trying to recruit people. So, uh, in the UK, for example, all the supermarkets are desperately trying to recruit drivers um, so they can up their up their uh, online delivery. Um, you know, think healthcare, obviously, you know, huge, uh, you know, huge needs at the moment. But also, there are lots of other companies who are, um, you know, continuing to to recruit and look through the look for the best talent. Um, during this crisis, I mean, in terms of what happens with recruitment afterwards, I think it's it, it's very it is very difficult to say. I think that um, a lot of companies will reshape the way their workforce looks and and what they and what they do, whether that's embracing uh, you know embracing more e-commerce or, or whatever whatever that might be. So, um, you know, I, I think it's it, it's it's difficult to speculate because it will be different in different industries and it will be different in different countries but i think that anyone expecting um you know recruitment recruitment in i don't know let's say january 2021 to be the same as recruitment in january 2020 um is going to be sorely disappointed it, it, it will it will definitely be different and that's about the only certain thing i can say right uh, so, yeah, just let's shift our focus from the pandemic. And, you know, generally speaking, uh, how do you believe, you know, what's a great employee experience, according to you? And how must, um, you know, people kind of uh, look at it in terms of tech as well? How do you create a really engaged, uh, you know, team? Or how do you create a, a very good employee experience? Yeah, I think the key thing here, and this um, is something that um, we looked at in our book, Exceptional Talent. I co-wrote that book with um, my good friend, Mervyn Dinan, um, and we're writing another one called uh, Digital Talent at the moment, and, and also in some of the research that, that we've done. So we did a big piece of research into uh, talent experience. Um, towards the towards the end of last year, um, and, and the, the same thing comes through all the time. It's it, it's the fact that you have to think about the experience from um, the point of view of of the employee. You know whether they're whether it's someone going through the recruitment process or something work someone working for your organisation. It, it is a single lived experience. So you know their experience of recruitment and their experience of onboarding and their experience of engagement. And training and offboarding, you know that that is a single experience of a single journey um, during their time at that employer. Um, and the disconnect is the way that employers will deliver that journey. It could cross, uh, you know, numerous departments um, which have different attitudes to uh, the quality of the experience that they give. Um, it might cross lots of different technologies that don't necessarily w work well together. And, and that's really to do with the traditional way that organizations have structured and um, how they've bought technology and, and, and how they think about things. And I think that the companies really getting this right are the companies who are focusing on this this is a you know this is a single journey for 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 a human being or or you know a group of human beings and how do we reduce the friction in that and how do we make sure that the the experience we give them is the same as the perception of the employer brand we gave them when they wanted to join um, and actually how do we make sure when they leave that when they leave the company they're they're advocates for that company um, you know whether that's um, you know maybe they might return as employee might do it one day maybe they might they might recommend the company as an employer to uh, you know uh, their friends and their network, um, or just being advocates for the, the company and the and the business, um, the business that it does. So it, it's really important to look at it as um, a joined up 
a joined up journey and it, i always go back to what i say it's always um key to to think you know to get the strategy right before you think of the technology so it's a join up joint journey and how does technology su support that um and you know that might be about using a single system or it might be using the best of breed systems for for each of those use cases but making sure they're integrated superbly and are giving a very consistent um experience to the employee mm -hmm. so it has to be a seamless experience you know so that uh, it creates a sense of you know continuity and it's not broken or you just or you're gonna have a bad experience right yeah absolutely and you know countless examples of this um you know a very close friend of mine um got a job somewhere last year and the recruitment experience was absolutely first class it was just absolutely exceptional um he was working a three-month notice period and the onboarding experience during that three months was was absolutely abysmal um with him constantly having to phone the employer to get reference numbers and all that kind of stuff um but when he, he when he joined the company it, you know he's really enjoyed working there but there was that kind of that dip in experience that um made him question his decision to join that company and uh, other people in his position, um, you know, may have withdrawn their application or um, immediately thought, you know, this started started the job with the impression this company isn't really for them and maybe they'll only stay for a, a short period of time. So it's all of those, it's all of those stages and just being consistent um, in, in the quality of experience that's, that's given and, and really doing this from a kind of a, you know, a user-centered design um uh, point of view it's like you know what is the experience like for the people who are experiencing it and very often the people planning and designing the experience aren't experiencing it so um yeah i, I, th I think it's really important and i think it becomes even more important as as we as we move forward as we use um you know more and more you know and, and we, as we use more and more technology right and then i think it also becomes uh you know essential that even if you kind of reject the candidate, you know, the quality of experience that you give to the candidate to explain to them that, you know, why have you been rejected uh, will also be important because as you said, they will be advocates for your brand. And, you know, if you give them a, a good reason why they got rejected, then they will be happy with that experience. And, uh, you know, that would create a really good brand even for the employers, right? Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And it's an interest, it's a really interesting discussion. And again, it's a discussion that isn't perhaps as in-depth and sophisticated as it should be. So on the one side of the discussion, you can sit there and say, you know, every single employer should give quality feedback to every single, um, every single employee. And, and some of them do. Uh, and that's the one side of the debate. On the other side of the debate, you have, you know, overworked HR teams and recruiters saying, well, hang on a minute, we had 5,000 applications for this job. There is absolutely no way um, that we can, um, we can do that. And you get this kind of polarized situation, which I think causes um, the problems that we have in, in candidate experience, where, um, you know, one group of people saying everyone should do this, but not really saying how <laughs> and then the other group of people saying well, yeah we absolutely can't do this so we're not going to kind of look into it so um you know i think the companies who are doing this well uh, have really is kind of really thinking about practically actually what could we do and it might be a chatbot it might be um you know moving some of the or you know some of the kind of the software driven assessment to earlier in the process that could give people you know some kind of some kind of automated some kind of automated feedback and um, it, it could be just about you know prioritizing that in, in the workflow and it's it's very different for every company and every industry and i i think having a polarized conversation about it doesn't help um but you know in the last few years i have seen um, lots of companies addressing this addressing this seriously um, in the in the volume business um, you know chatbots and automated communication are obviously uh, the technology is developing on a month by month basis and you know and I think that's that that's that's definitely going to be part of the answer absolutely right and you know when it comes to uh, content marketing strategies when you want to uh, deliver success and you want to create a great employer brand what are some of the key points to keep in mind when you are 
you know, developing that strategy. So, uh, you know, the, the first and most important key point, um, which I feel I say time and time again, but people still don't do, is understand your audience. So, um, you know, a lot and a large organization will have a number of different audiences that it's speaking to. So, understanding that audience, understanding where they are, understanding what motivates them, um, you know, understanding what's going to emotionally connect connect with them is important because when it comes to content marketing, um, even business to business content marketing and employment content marketing, um, emotion is always key. Emotion is the, is the thing that drives action always in, in, in content and storytelling. So you, you really have to understand your audience to, to understand um, you know what what's gonna reson- what's gonna resonate with them. So I think that's part of it. And then, you know, as, as I've always said, the, the the second part of it is always is about the the, the 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 stories that you're the stories that you're telling. It's not just about giving very um, you know bland information about the employment experience. It's about bringing that to life and bringing the people who work there to life and, and listening to their stories and, um, you know, hearing the, hearing the human aspect of that and, and in a very authentic way, in a way that's, um, in a way that's believable. So I think it's the um, understanding the audience and understanding how storytelling works are the things that probably get missed off the most when people are thinking about content for talent acquisition um i think the other the other important thing is to is to is to also think about format so lots of different formats um available and understanding the best way to use them is critical so whether that's video or audio or the written word um how do you know what are the particular nuances of each of those formats what are their what are their advantages what are their disadvantages um, and how do you um deploy them in a way that's going to help you tell your story and help you not just resonate with your target audience, but motivate your target audience to take action. You know, whether that's, um, you know, applying for a job or registering for the you know, mailing list or whatever, you know, whatever that, whatever that might be. Right. And you said that, you know, it has to be authentic, you know, it, you know, what companies often do is that they do not uh, portray themselves as really how they are. And then there is kind of a glitch in the experience of the candidate because they expected something off of the organization and they had a different picture in their mind. Uh, but really, the company does not portray uh, that genuity. So, you know, how do you, how do you stay authentic and what are the different sources where you kind of portray yourself and make good quality content visible? Um, yeah, I think it... it you know that that authenticity is 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 kind of really important. I think there is another aspect to that at, at the moment, which is uh, a lot around how uh, companies all over the world are responding to this uh, responding to this current crisis. Because there are there are real winners emerging, um, and there are there are kind of real losers in terms of um, you know companies sort of behaving in a in an unethical um, in an unethical way or, or a way that doesn't really sort of chime with the chime with the times. Um, it, it's always a it's it's always a tough one um, because you know there's there's kind of good or bad things about every every employ every employer experience and I think it's also kind of understanding that there is a um, a balance of places where people will find their information so um, you know reaching you know getting content into the to the channels where people are consuming it is is also very important but also kind of understanding that that people will be doing other research and um, uh, you know looking at things like review sites and, and trying to get a, a, a complete picture about what it's like to work for an organization um, and I think it's kind of important that organizations realize that they can't be all things to all people. There will be aspects of their employment experience that does not appeal to, um, you know, certain people who are within their target audience. And I think that some, you know, a level of honesty about that is is a good thing because it it means that the people who who join the company understand the experience and are, uh, you know, more likely to stay and and provide value for that that organization but it's a difficult thing for it's a difficult thing for companies to do um and it's been difficult for for, for kind of the last sort of five to five, five five to ten five to ten years but i think it's that understanding that you know you can't be all things to to, to all people it's just it's just not it's just not possible yeah it, it, that's very difficult to kind of always keep it uh you know staged 
as such. And yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and you know, lastly, I'd like to ask you, Matt, if you have any other important sound bites that you'd like to leave our viewers with. Um, I think that um, it's important. I think the most exp the most important thing is is always round experience. And um, one thing that I really hope comes out of the current crisis is 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 more compassion in in the recruitment process more kind of understanding on uh, um you know what people who are going through a job seeking process are actually going through and um you know kind of supporting them with uh you know the, the right in the right information um and also just really looking very very um carefully at um the bias that there might be in the in the recruitment in the recruitment process um, and what those those biases those biases look like and and how they can be how they can be overcome because I think you know that that notion of quality that quality experience and empathy and eliminating bias where it, where it can be are, are just sort of critically important and I think the the, the employers that, that do that are going to be the employers that that, that really uh, create a lot of value for themselves moving forward absolutely that is really, really important to uh, treat people with compassion, equality, and not have any, you know, bias around this, be more inclusive. Yeah, those are the things that, uh, you know, a lot of people are now coming to know, especially because of uh, the crisis, because uh, they really kind of connect with each other now, they value people now. So that is important, definitely. And thank you so much for that message. Well, it was wonderful talking to you, Matt. I really appreciate your time and I had a lovely conversation with you. Uh, it was really, really a learning experience for me. So thank you so much. My absolute pleasure.